from PRX. Uh, hey, everybody, this is Scoots, and this is a uh, little Valentine's Day uh, TNG episode. I didn't realize how many TN- t- Star Trek The Next Generation. Don't worry if you've never seen Star Trek The Next Generation before, but this is a really fun, like, this is one of my favorite ones. Because there's a couple where we get, like, really insights into Jean-Luc Picard and uh, that go pretty deep. And uh, so there's a lot of good ones. This is this is not the number one one. But I think we may have run that as a repeat already, but this is probably number two deep Picard cut. But you you could sleep right, right through it. Uh, no need to have any Earl Grey uh, for this one. But, and, oh, by the way, if you're a TNG fan... We're working on something. If you listen to the ad-supported podcast, we're working on uh, our own uh, feed full of TNG episodes. And then if you support the show on Sleep With Me Plus, you have so much access now to, to TNG content split out. You know, you could get the story-only TNG content in one podcast or the ad-free TNG episodes. Or if you're a boar friend or a boar bestie, you get access to those uh, compilation episodes. But stay tuned, because soon you might find a TNG uh, like uh, a feed in your podcast app, your ad-supported podcast app, uh, full of TNG episodes if you're a TNG super fan. So thanks, thanks, and good night, everybody. Oh, wait, this is the beginning of the show. Uh, so here's uh, Scoots, uh, right, well, I don't know. Oh, well, he'll be doing the PP like the... Uh, PP1, that's what I call it. Sorry, it's that's a very technical term. But this is like where I say, uh, friends beyond the binary, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls. Or this came after that, probably best. Thanks, everybody. All right, everybody, it's Scooter here. It's time uh, to talk about Sleep With Me Plus, but more to talk about Sleep With Me. Like, you know, Sleep With Me, why does it even exist, right? Because I had found that most sleep audio that was out there, it didn't work for me. And a lot of it made me feel worse, right? Because it reminded me of how it feels in the deep, dark night. And that's where the idea of Sleep With Me came from, was uh, being lonely in the deep, dark night, needing something to take my mind off of what was keeping me awake. Because I was desperate to sleep, but I was more desperate for all the rigmarole around not being able to sleep to stop. And that's why Sleep With Me exists, because I was like, man, doesn't it, does anybody else in the world want something like this? A friend in the deep, dark night to tell them stories, make them giggle, keep them company so they could fall asleep. And you probably heard me talk about Sleep With Me Plus and supporting the show. Like, why does Sleep With Me need support? We're 100% reliant on uh, listener action to support the show, whether it's supporting the sponsors or supporting the podcast directly. There's no outside funding for Sleep With Me. And at this point, it takes over 120 hours a week to make uh, two episodes of Sleep With Me and put them out and, and keep in touch and do all the stuff to keep the show going, which is it ends up being over 500 hours a month. And in the past, Uh, You know, I used to do as much of that work uh, as I could myself or cut where I could. And, uh, you know, over the years, we have had the support to slowly delegate. And all that means the sport. So show is more sustainable. Like when I was doing it all myself, it just wasn't sustainable. And I think most of the people that rely on Sleep With Me on a regular basis, you want the podcast to be around when when you need it, right? Uh, You want it to be there, whether you listen twice a week or you listen to 10 episodes a night, you count on the show and the show counts on on you, right? And so if you support the show on Sleep With Me Plus, what do you get? Well, you get uh, to listen the way you want to listen. You know, we've learned over the years, like uh, some people like stories, some people like intros, some people like certain styles of episodes, some people like bonus exclusive content. And Sleep With Me Plus is able to offer all that in a way that's easy to find stuff, easy to use. So if any of that sounds appealing to you, you could sign up at sleepwithmepodcast.com slash plus. That's uh, sleepwithmepodcast.com slash plus. And you can Try out a seven-day free trial if you want. You know, get everything set up and then see what you think. Uh, thanks so much. All right, everybody. It's time to talk about tonight's sponsor, Helix Sleep. 
Do yourself a favor, go to helixsleep.com slash sleep and take that Helix quiz. That was about four years ago that I took the Helix quiz, got matched with the Helix Dusk Lux, which is a perfect mattress for me and the way I sleep. Because the thing is, the Helix lineup offers 20 unique mattresses, including the award-winning Lux collection, the newly released Helix Elite collection. They have a mattress designed for big and tall sleepers, even a mattress made just for kids. And how would you know which one is going to fit you and your body? You just take that Helix sleep quiz. You find the perfect mattress in under two minutes. That personalized mattress is shipped straight to your door free of charge. And Helix knows there's no better way to test out a new mattress than by sleeping on it in your own home. That's why they offer a 100-night trial and a 10- to 15-year warranty to try out your new mattress. And here's the thing. Everybody's unique. Everybody sleeps differently. And that is why Helix has uh, several different mattress models to choose from. Each design for specific sleep positions and feel preferences. You know, if you're like me, I sleep on my stomach and my side. I sleep a hot, so I want to stay cool. And that's what happened. I took the quiz. I got matched with the Helix Dusk Lux. I love my Helix Dusk Lux. And the way I know is every time I leave town, I cannot wait to get back. That first night back in my Helix Dusk Lux, it's like I'm in a state of sleep bliss. Not only is it the best mattress I've slept on, but set up is fast and easy. Helix mattresses are delivered in a box, a straight to your door for free. And Helix is offering 20% off all mattress orders and two free pillows for our listeners. Go to helixsleep.com slash sleep and use the code helixpartner20. This is their best offer yet. It won't last long. With Helix, better sleep starts now. All right, everybody, it is time for the Sleepy Supporter Zone, the one part of the podcast where I pop my peas, if you please. I thank the listeners who support the sponsors, who take action. That's how we're able to be here for you free twice a week is those people. I know so many people enjoy this ad-supported uh, linear show, and I'm so glad we get to do it for you, and it's with the, all these people's help. And I want to thank Josie, who signed up for a referral program. Josie already earned three months of ad-free episodes and story-only episodes on Sleep With Me Plus, referred three people to the show for free, just sharing uh, about it on social media, letting people know about it. You could sign up uh, and you could be like Josie. You just have to share on a regular basis. Uh, you earn referrals, you introduce people to the free podcast, and then you get the paid version of the podcast in return. And all you need to do is go to sleepwithmepodcast.com slash refer, and then l- let me know about it. Uh, so thank you, Josie. So that's the first part of the Sleepy Supporter Zone. The second part is you getting the Support you need right now. If you're in need of support right now, fill out, uh, just go to the show notes. There's links to resources, including international resources you could connect with. It's also about being a part of positive change, taking action, not just saying Black Lives Matter, not just saying stop AAPI hate, not just saying support Ukraine, but taking action, learning more. There's links to resources we could do that in the show notes, or you could join some of the things we're doing supporting the Midnight Mission and people experiencing homelessness in Los Angeles, supporting the Trevor Project, and supporting hand in hand uh so wherever your heart is wherever your heart aches uh, you could take action you don't have to uh, help us uh, support one of those organizations but you can or you could go out there and support something else you know just to be a part of positive change uh but you can always check out the show notes uh for more information if you want to support one of those organizations and join us and that's the end of the sleepy supporter zone oh mystery bard a lot of people help out on the show who are they posty poster sounds like a Scotty, Jennifer, Eric and the team write us down or on the website. I am the mystery bar. I do the lullabies, yeah. I do commissions at JonathanMan.net. I'll write a song for you. Any reason at all. You can tell me the story and I'll make it personal. You see the kindness shine straight on through when the listeners form their own Facebook group. Keith, Stacy, Sarah. Jennifer, these are your moderators. Get support, dear scooter on Patreon. Buy the merch and support the sponsors. You can find anything you want at sleepwithmepodcast.com. And we're so proud that we could dance. Rusty Biscuit, Lois, and I like banana. Leah does the transcript.
Thanks, this. Mystery Bar. Don't forget, you want ad. You you say I want I want I prefer an ad free experience. I prefer story only episodes, but I want it for free. You could earn it. Sleepwithmepodcast.com slash refer. You just introduce people to the free podcast, and you could earn months of uh, ad free episodes of Sleep with Me and story only episodes of Sleep with Me and Sleep with Me Plus. That's sleepwithmepodcast.com slash refer. We say we slow it down and get on with the show. Uh, hey, you only tossing, turning, mind racing, trouble getting to sleep, trouble staying asleep. Welcome. This is Sleep With Me, the podcast that's here to put you to sleep. We do it to bedtime story. All you need to do is get in bed, turn out the lights and press play. I'm going to do the rest. What I'm going to attempt to do is create a safe place where you can set aside whatever's keeping you awake, whether it's uh, things that you're thinking about, uh, so thoughts, uh, feelings, uh, like uh, either emotions uh, that are, you, you know that are traveling through you, or uh, physical sensations, noises, changes in routine, travel, uh, stormy weather. You know, that could be something like uh, in the summer season. Whatever's keeping you awake, I'd like to take your mind off that. The, the, the safe place I'm going to try to create, here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to send my voice across the deep, dark night. I'm going to use the lulling, soothing, creaky, dulcet tones. To, to, like, I won't be tuning up. Uh, I don't know, I guess, like, I'm slightly out of tune. But, but, like, it, it's been that way. I guess because I'm not a musician. Like it, like I'm, I'm both undertuned. Can you? Is it called overtuning and undertuning? This isn't j- a joke either. Like when you say, but you pluck the string and then you move. You know, whatever you go, bing, 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 and then you move it. Boom, boom, boom. I mean, I know some people do that by ear, and some people use a device. I mean, I would say I'm out of tune, but then I would never know. Like I could be sitting there all day, like like be like, okay, now I'm overtuned. Now you're under too too taut, not taut enough. Uh, T A U. That's a podcasty word. Taut. Uh, also, I guess that's a good end. It, like if I wanted to talk, like one of my aunt, my aunt from long, taut. I thought I taught you uh, how to tune this thing. I didn't realize that's a good N word for that particular uh, voice. Uh, Anyway, so if you're new here, I've got a bunch of different techniques. No, like they're all so ineffective uh, that the, the, I'm effective in my ineffectiveness, uh, and I'm affectionately ineffective. That's just, that's the key to the podcast. To be honest, I try to bring some affection, some plutonic safe affection with plenty of boundary space, uh, because I've been there, sleepless. Uh, so I know what it's like tossing and turning. In this podcast, it doesn't work for everybody. It's a little bit different, a little bit silly. Try to make bedtime a little bit less stressful and fun. And also take the take the load off. If you can't sleep, I'll be here the whole time. And my affection springs from that, to be like, geez, I know what it's like lying there. And if I could relieve that at all, it's you totally my honor, because I've been there uh, as a kid and as an adult. Uh So if you're new, I guess that's it, Affectionate Inaffection, the Sleep With Me podcast. Uh, That doesn't make any sense. Exactly. Ineffective, affectionately ineffective, uh, and ineffective, whatever. And I'm not even sure what invectives are, but I might have a few of those as well. But if you're new here, let me set the structure up for you. So the show opens with about five or six minutes of business because we do that mostly at the top of the show. And the credits, and that's how we keep the show free and the archives free. So essential part of listening, if you listen to more than one episode, if you're new, you know, not as important. Then we're like a few minutes into an intro, which usually the intro is around 12 minutes uh, to demonstrate my affectionate infectiveness. Or, you know, maybe hopefully it is a little bit infective, uh, you know, not like in in the thought way. They say, okay, I can relax here. Scoots is trying to carry me off into dream. Well, I'm, I'm not actually carrying you off, uh, like physically, like I'm more escorting you, and you can drift off across the threshold from wake to sleep whenever you're ready or whenever you, you it just happens to happen. So the intro is kind of like a, like a lot of people, some people use it while they're getting ready for bed. Some people fall asleep during it. Some people skip it. 
Uh, and so people listen to it during the day or some people use it when they wake up in the middle of the night. So there's really no prescribed way to listen to this podcast. I mean, it's like, uh, so like, there's not a lot of shoulds around here. It's a podcast that you don't need to listen to. You only got to kind of listen. It's a podcast where I'm doing my best, but my, you know, my best is affectionately ineffective, uh, and you don't need to listen to it, but you're also under no pressure to fall asleep. That's why the shows are an hour, because I'm here to keep you company. I'm here to be your companion, your friend in the deep, dark nights. Uh, and tonight we'll be talking about Star Trek The Next Generation, the episode The Tapestry. And there's a great good quote in that episode uh, at the very end, actually, because it, it I said, why did they call this The Tapestry? And John Lucas says it at the end. He goes, uh, He's talking about the past, which can come up at bedtime for a lot of us. He goes, geez, there's parts of my youth I'm not proud of. Uh, Loose threads, untidy parts of me I would like to remove. Who can't relate to that, right? I don't know if you could hear that. My hands were clasped and my wrist cracked. I was so so emphasizing that point. uh, And I'm still clasping my hands. Uh, I don't know. I'm in a hand-clasping mode. Uh, but when I pulled it back to Jean Luc, uh, but when I pulled on one of those threads, it unraveled the tapestry of my life. And I'll tell you, for me at bedtime, it does feel like there's a lot of uh, pulling of threads, uh, like uh, w- like with the different parts. Of me, you see, I'm, okay, I'm ready to go to bed now. And all these little, like all these little strings, they start pulling themselves. They say, hey, hey, remember that? Remember this? Why didn't you do this today? You never got that done. You never follow through on that. What about tomorrow? Oh, boy, let's think about that. Don't mess that. You know, all these different, like a litany of string pulling. I like using the word litany every few who, uh, they just like that word. Uh, I don't know why. But uh, anyway, like like where it's it's a lot of things tugging at your, uh, not just your thoughts, but your feelings and somatically for me, like my physical body almost. And that causes the tossing and turning, which causes it like, well, should I try to resolve these problems? Should I just tell my brain to be quiet? Like for me, that that's the, the rabbit hole I descend down. This podcast offers an alternative. Uh, uh, like let's take a breath here and picture just a fuzzy, friendly rabbit. So because uh, you could listen to me and follow my rabbit like because you, you, you hear about these rabbit dens. Uh, and I hear, I hear they have a lot of twists and turns, but they also have nice den-like areas that are nice and warm where all the rabbits can snuggle and rest. And ideally, the story and the intro both do that. Like, uh, So I'll be talking about Star Trek coming up in a few minutes, uh, but I'll go on a twist, I'll go on a tangent, I'll over-explain, I'll slow down, I'll do, do talk about the dialogue. At any point, you might say, well, I'm not going to follow Scoots. Any, you know, I'm going to check out this, uh, look at all those, I wonder if I could put my head on that rabbit's uh, side. Oh, this is nice here. Nice r- rabbit brass. And, uh, and ideally, you don't even notice. You're listening to me. You stop thinking or you've been distracted. As you think about, like, how about, I wonder if they sell any tapestries of Jean-Luc Picard, because I would like to have one of those on my wall, uh, especially one, or actually on the wall of my castle. That would be cool. If if you had a castle and then you have a tapestry of Jean-Luc Picard, like, that is, uh, I don't know if that's, is that meta or ironic? I don't know, but it would be cool. You'd have it in your, like, the Great Hall. You say, yeah, this is what's that giant tapestry on? What's Jean Luc Picard, Enterprise, you know, to, to Star Trek The Next Generation? And yeah, in the Halls of Heroes, I have other tapestries of, you know, Data, Worf, uh, Roe, Riker, uh, Gein, and, you know, all my peeps. Uh, ta- they say, okay, interesting. And I say, yeah, I like a little bit of, like, I like a, like a, like a great, I like to live in a castle with tapestries from uh, modern TV shows. Uh, so, yeah, where do you buy your tapestries? Well, I, I, I like uh, t- tapestries, tapestries, tapestries. This is where I usually shop. Uh, that's where I, you know, that's where I like to do most of my tapestry purchases. Uh, anyway, it was just, it was, anyway, 
So I guess I got off tangent there, but uh, or I was on a tangent. But so if you're new here, that's the structure of the show. We talk about uh, the next generation on Sundays. On Tuesdays, we have uh, like a bedtime story or something like a bedtime story. And then Thursdays, we have like a bedtime story based on that, like on a, that's part of an episodic series. And this podcast is a little bit different than other bedtime stories. Bedtime stories for grownups, uh, just my particular brand bedtime story, which is like a, a, like a oddball, meandering, if ineffective, uh, it maybe has invectives, but it's infectious, infectiously, hopefully like the, the boar giggles part are like infectious where you say, wow, like think about it, like... Uh, like uh, thousands and thousands and thousands and thousands of people are listening to this at the same time you are. So you're not alone. And while not everybody that's listening might be dealing with the same thing you are, uh, almost everyone that listens is struggling somehow with with either getting enough sleep or getting rest or, or, or just feeling a sense of safety and quiet. So as, 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 as alone as it can feel, you know, there's a lot of other people right this moment listening to my voice right now uh, that are that are with you in some way. And uh, so I don't know if that helps. I, I thought that was one of the words that rhymes with infective or vective. Connective. It's connective. Uh, it is. Uh, and most of those people like me can relate to how it feels. Uh, we may not know exactly what it is. Uh, but we can relate, and that's why I make this show, because I tried other stuff for me, like, you know, all the other sleep stuff. And I said, geez, why isn't there something a little bit like a, a bit, I'm a bit of a goofball. Why is there something like that? And I, I said, why well, I have fun telling stories like that. Let me try it and see if I can put people to sleep. And it took a few hundred episodes, I think, to get it, get, get a good groove on. But we, you know, we worked our way there. And some people have been along for the whole ride. And, and if you're new, I'm glad you're here. You know, give the show a few tries. It doesn't work for everybody, like I said. But most of the people that write reviews say, geez, after the two or second or third time, you know, I, I was able to let down my guard and, uh, you know, it, it started helping me out or it made me smile. Or I couldn't fall asleep, but I, but I, I I could listen to it, and it kept me company in the deep dark nights. So whatever it is, like I said, like I say, every almost every intro. I'm glad you're here. I work very hard. I yearn and I strive to help you fall asleep. So thanks so much for coming by. All right, everybody, it's Scoots here. I'm talking about Sleep With Me Plus. If you haven't checked out a trial, you know, there's a seven-day trial at all levels at Sleep With Me Plus. You go to sleepwithmepodcast.com slash plus, sign up, you know, cancel in six days uh, before your trial renews. But I want to talk about a uh, email I get uh, somewhat often. It kind of goes like a little bit like this. So maybe you can relate to this email. You know, Scoots, I love this podcast. I've been listening to it for years. It has changed my life. It has changed how I sleep. And I know most people love listening to this ad supported version. They listen linearly and they wind down during the intro. They fall asleep during the story. But Scoots, I'm different. I love the show, man. But the thing is, I, I listen all night long and, you know, the just transitions between the shows and the ads or, oh, man, it, like with Supporter Zone, I fall asleep early during the intro and then I hear the Supporter Zone or so, the, the sponsors between the story or I'm a musician. So hearing the Mystery Bard sing and I want you to know, yeah, I see you. You love the podcast. It's had this powerful impact. I'm putting you to sleep. You consider that priceless, right? That's what we designed Sleep With Me Plus for, for all those people, people that listen all night, people that just want the intros, people that just want the stories, musicians who don't want any music, they get that story only feed, people that don't want to hear the supporter zone, they don't want to hear the ads, they don't want to hear the thank yous at the end. You just want one specific show, a lot of it, whether it's Bake Off or TNG or the store, certain stories, you want exclusive content. All those people are a little bit different and that's what we finally have been able to offer with Sleep With Me plus is for those of you that say, I love this show, but I could, I, could, I could use a little bit more of this or a little bit less of this. So get over there. Sleep With Me Plus was made for you. We've been waiting 10 years to be able to do this for you. So you could sign up and again, 
test it out first. Uh, it works in almost every podcast app, even on Spotify. And you can sign up at sleepwithmepodcast.com slash plus, sleepwithmepodcast.com slash plus, and check it out. Thanks. All right, here we are. We're talking episode season six, episode 15. It came out uh, February 15th, 1993. And I was trying to think what I was doing. That's right around my birthday. That's why I was like, what was I doing February 13th, 1993? It was up to probably up to no good. I may have been in Buffalo uh, visiting someone. And uh, like, uh, anyway, like, uh, but I'm not positive. Uh, anyway, enough about me. Let's talk about Picard and Q, a Q episode without a Q in the title. And I didn't read any articles about this episode because I, I don't want to spoil myself. But, uh, you know, I guess it's more of a card-centric episode. But there's a lot of cute, and it's a blast from the past. Uh, and again, this episode opens mid-action, as we have a couple times every season, it seems like. They're in the med bay. Very medical procedural action. Like, a, I don't know what year ER started. I don't know if that was late 90s or mid 90s or early 90s. Uh, Eric LaSalle, uh, G- G- George Clooney, Juliana Mar- 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 I can't say her last name. Uh, Goose, uh, from Anthony, uh, oh boy, I'm sorry, Anthony. Uh, Goose, I- I can't, I'm sorry to call you Goose, but uh, actually, I think I also liked you in Revenge of the Nerds. So that's why like Anthony Edwards, of course. Thanks, Brain. But that was a TV, TV. Here's a little uh, factoid. George Clooney was in two shows named ER. There was also a situational comedy called ER with the subtitle, It'll Leave You in Stitches. A lot of times they think these situational comedies are dreams because I, the only time I saw this ER was when I would be sick home from school on reruns on like the Lifetime channel or some random network like WOOR or something. Or, you know, one of the like cable channels you'd rarely tune into, they had a couple good situational comedies on during the day reruns, and ER was one of them. And George Clooney was on that. Uh, it's just a fact. You can look it up. But it, Or, you know, it could be a fugue stated. That has happened before. But, oh, boy, what an episode. Opens in action, as I said. Uh, Dr. Crusher's putting on a turquoise lab coat or doctor's coat, which is the first time I noticed that. But I mean, you know, many things have passed me by. Everyone's in prep mode. Uh, number four, they're coming in through the number four, uh, energizing room or whatever. Uh, what is it called? The transport transporter room number four coming in now. And they come in, Worf's, uh, cradling, uh, Picard. In his arms, because he said, well, he, he's, he's overtired. He was being pouty. Riker has a phaser out. Like, they come in like they were transported out right in mid-action with three other crew members. Again, I haven't watched these episodes continuously, so I don't know what's happened with Worf, but this is the first time I noticed he has a ponytail, which I don't think was always the case. So I assume there is a plot point that explains that, that I missed, uh... They lay Picard down. They they ran into some Lenarians. A bad conference. Uh, bad Lenarian conference. Compressed Terrians uh, is what they were dealing with. And uh, let's see, B, B, Ben, oh, Terian, compressed Terrian beam. Uh, Crusher is really working hard uh, while Picard takes a rest. Uh, and there's building music, and then the camera starts zooming from above, uh, showing Picard lying down. Then it fades to white. And when it fades back again, it's like iridescent white, and Picard's looking around. Everything around him is white, like he's inside a cloud. And there's sort of like an iridescent uh, figure with arms open at a distance. Uh, very luminous, and who is it but our good friend Q? who holds out his hand for Picard to shake. And Picard t- takes his hand, and uh, uh, Q basically says, the camera, I think, pull, oh, no, he takes his hand and he pulls into Q. I don't know if the camera Picard did that. And Q says, welcome to the big farm in the sky, uh, Jean-Luc Picard. 
And this is unintentional that these themed episodes keep coming up, but uh, it just some taking recommendations. Uh, but Picard and Q within the open episode opens, and Picard and Q are holding hands, but Picard pulls his hand back. Uh, and then I'll read through the dialogue, but his father appears and scolds him at some point. Uh, Q's iridescent look is reminds me of like a character from one of the Tron movies, uh, just the, the level of glow. His father, again, is not pleased. Then there's more and more voices. I got to say something about John Delancey's hair here. Looks gorgeous. Uh, man, his hair looks good this episode. Probably the best head of hair I've ever seen on, on a uh, member of the Continuum uh, today. But, it, no, really, like I, I said, it just struck me enough to write it down. I said, man, his hair looks great. Uh, something ahead... Picard looks down. Q toss. Oh, okay, heart. Uh, okay, we'll get to the dialogue. So Picard, or, you know, Q says, "Welcome to the big farm." And uh, Picard says, "This isn't the uh, bit, you know." And he goes, "Yeah, yeah. By the way, I'm I'm your uh, higher power." And Picard goes, "No." And then Q says, "Blasphemy! Don't make me smite you." And he goes, you know, don't you remember with that, that conference they sent you? To, they said, go do some research on the big farm, the Tenarians or something. And Picard says, I refuse to believe the afterlife is run by you. The universe is not so badly designed. And then his dad comes by. He says, don't go off to the academy, Jean-Luc. Uh, Starfleet's not going to be any good for you. But you never listen to me anyway. You're, bit, you know, Mr. Big Shot. Uh, and he goes, don't you, don't you know, like, I'm your internal critic. I'm trying to protect you from this kind of stuff. Uh, and Picard says, stop. Uh, and then the dad still says, you, you've still managed to disappoint me, Jean-Luc. And then there's a bunch of building voices, as I said. And Q says, these are all the people you let down. And uh, Picard says, what do you mean? And Q goes, you know, butterfly wings, bro. Uh, you, your butterfly wings have let all these people down. Nice job. Uh, do you want to do one apology or multiple ones? Because they're all listening. And Picard says, I'm not going to perform for your amusement. Uh, and Q goes, this moment's for you. And Picard goes, you don't do anything. You've got something, you know, he goes, for the benefit of my soul. And Q goes, well, now that you've shuffled off the mortal coil, we're going to have plenty of time to spend together. And Picard goes, oh, boy, like what? Uh, and Q goes, are you forever? Are you sure you don't have any regrets? Uh, and Picard goes, yeah, regret being here with you. And, you know, Q plays faux dramatic, you know, oh, John, you, Luke, uh, you, you hurt my feelings. And again, I haven't seen all these episodes, so I didn't know Picard has an artificial heart. Uh, you know, I thought he had a heart of gold, but he has an artificial heart, and uh, cues like that malfunctioned, uh, unreliable technology. And Q goes, you never heard the story of what, uh, you know, what's up with this thing? And Picard was like, mistake I made when I was a kid. And then we, uh, let's see, let me get back to this. Uh, yeah, when he throws the heart, but he throws, tosses the artificial heart to uh, Picard. Picard looks down when he brings it up. And he says, I regret a great many things, really. Uh, then we see young Picard kind of, uh, uh, do like when he loses his heart, like uh, it's with a Nausicaan, like Princess Nausicaa. I don't know if it's the same thing, but... Uh, he, uh, like, he loses his heart, he laughs uh, when his feelings are, when he's sad about his heart uh, from Cupid, you know, who took it. Because uh, Cupid says, I'm from Nausicaa, we're taking, you know, you know, this is figurative, uh, not really. But, uh, and you see the younger Picard, there's like an actor playing a younger Picard, dashing his H-E-C-K. And as he's lying there, Picard kneels down and looks at his younger self and, uh, uh, he, he goes, geez, uh, I wonder if I could do things uh, differently. And Q goes, uh, well, maybe what if I, uh, and Picard goes, yeah, it's a really uh, different person, arrogant, undisciplined, and too much ego, too little wisdom, a bit like you, Q. And Q goes, yeah, it sounds way more interesting. Pity you had to change. Uh, 
And Q goes, if you had to do it all over again, and Picard goes, things would be different. And then next thing you know, Picard's in, uh, he, uh, let's see, how does this transfer happen? I think Picard, like, hold, holds his hand to his face, and then he's in a room with a woman who's just kind of rejected him, and he's holding his hand to his face, and the camera zooms in on him, and then they cut to commercial. And then when they come back, uh, there's two, oh, two blue thermoses on one of the tables. That was the first thing I noticed when they came back. Uh, Picard's hand is on his face. Uh, as a woman walks off, his two roommates or best friends clap, a male, male and a female. Uh, his, I liked his roommate has like a Starfleet belt buckle. So sweet. It looks like a giant A almost. His male roommate. Really cool. And Picard's so happy. He's like tickled pink. Uh, and he talks to his roommates. They're like, what has happened? He goes, oh, no, more trouble and romance. He, he can't believe it. They, they call him Johnny. And Picard is very, he goes, Marta Batiandes or whatever. He, he says, uh, and she goes, are you okay? He goes, well, just I'm a little out of it. And Corey, that's the other dude's name. He goes, Johnny just wants your sympathy. He goes, we're going to go get go to the casino. You want to come? And Picard says, I'll catch up. And then Marta says, are you okay? He goes, eh. And then Corey says, he's got another date maybe. And she goes, you're incorrigible. And then Q appears. Uh, he's holding like a pointer. Or is it a stick? Uh, he's very curious about uh, um, Picard's dating life. Uh, and uh, Picard's 21 years old at this. Picard looks at himself in the mirror. He's in a, he's a regular, the Jean-Luc we know. But uh, I guess uh, he's 21 years old. Then Q sits down at like a chess-like game that's made from crystals. Uh, and they kind of talk about history because Picard says, geez, I don't want to, like, I don't want to mess up history. Don't you know all the rules? And he goes, I can't change the past. Uh, you know, it'll change the future. And Picard goes, your ego is out of control. He goes, you're not that important. And Picard goes, I'm not going to alter history. And Q goes, well, uh, I, I promise you won't alter history. How's that sound? Uh, nothing you do uh, will, will alter history. Um, and he goes, you know you, where you are? And he goes, Starbase Earhart. I guess Amelia Earhart. He goes, this is where we're waiting for our assignments. And Q goes, or yeah, Q says, yeah, that's what, this is when you and the Nausikans run across each other. Do you think you're going to change things? Oh, when he said he called Picard's ego out, he used his pointer to sweep off the chessboard. He goes, very well, like when Picard says, uh, it won't alter history. Also, 1305, Q's face, as he says, of course, uh, just at a later time. Because Picard says, do you think I'm going to go on to the big farm, or will that stop that? And he says, of course, just at a later, later time. Then Picard starts asking, or Q starts asking Picard about his dating life, which was funny. And then Picard's like, geez, I'm waiting. He goes, what time is it? It's 1611, which is 411, I believe. And Picard's late for a date. I said, he makes dates at 411 or 4 p.m., which really throws me off. And then he's at a bar. I, 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 made, I, I couldn't tell the age range here. It really all was throwing me off. Uh, He's at the bar with a woman named Penny who looks like she's much older than 21, like maybe, I don't know, 28 or 30 or something. And it also just seemed like, like I, could, I was like, is this a date or a professional visit? Uh, and she has very long earrings on. And she, she, Picard's like, uh, she's like, she's like, uh, she's like, aren't we going to get, you know, get down to the kissing business? Uh and Picard goes, well, I've been, I feel contemplative. And she goes, well, that's not why I'm here. I'm here. Uh... And he goes, well, I'm interested. And she goes, well, I'm from Rigo. My last name's Morak, and I like men in uniform, and I'm done talking. And then she goes in for a kiss, uh, and then she goes, uh, what am I, not, like, were you drunk last night or something? Uh, and Picard says, you're a very handsome woman. She goes, is that what you say to older women? And he goes, you don't look like an older woman. 
And then she throws a drink in his face because uh, she says, gee, skip whatever. And Q's behind the bar, like, cleaning a cup, and he throws the rag at Picard. And he says, puerile, which we learned before. Like, we, I think we, do, we talked about that before, but uh, uh, whatever. And then there's, like, a Dom Jot game going on, uh, which is kind of like a, a somewhere between snooker and pool. And they're getting a lot of cheers, and or bumper pool maybe too. And Picard's buddy, Corey, is kind of doing his best color of money. I don't know if color of money had come out yet. I think it had. Uh, he's doing his best color of money, Tom Cruise impression. And then I really like the Noskins talk. They go, play Dom Jot, who man? Uh, they're very, uh, like, uh, like high in testosterone style. But they're egging Corey on to play them and Dom Jot. And then it zooms into Picard. They go to the uh, they go to commercial. And then we see his buddy, Corey, has taken a bet with the, with the Nasikins. And Picard tries to talk him out of it. Uh, he goes, Jesus, this isn't a Nasikins are jerks. You know, you don't really want to play. Uh, you don't want to play them. And uh, let's see. Then we see Q in the background. He's lounging against a barrel and uh, watching. And Picard kind of lays out what's going to happen. Um, I forgot when he was with Penny. Q says, Penny, for your thoughts. I forgot about that pun. But Picard basically says, geez, Corey's going to lose and he's going to che- they're cheating. And then he's going to cheat them back. And that's why all this trouble starts. And he goes, and so I, tr- you know, I didn't take the sensible side. I took my friend's side. And Q goes, that's a beautiful story. Get you right here. And he taps his heart, you know. Another pun. A lot of puns in this with Q. And then the Dom Jack game's getting really intense. Uh, and Corey loses because the uh, Naskin says Dom Jot. When you win, I guess you say Dom Jot. Who man? Who man play Dom Jot? He says that again. And then we go back to the dorm room or their, you know, I guess it's more of a a barracks room, very nice, uh, more like a dorm room. And Co- Corey ch- tries to do like a little bit of a, like a little bit Han Solo here or something. Cause he says, I played a lot of Dom Jot in a lot of places and I've never seen the balls roll that well for anyone. Just reminded me of a line from something, but I wasn't sure what, uh, and Corey goes, I'm going to cheat back. And Ricard goes, no, 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 you can't do that. Uh, no way. And uh, Picard says, no way. Then Marta b- b- intervenes. Uh, and uh, B- Picard, seems, uh, Picard seems a little down, maybe. But then there's love in the air. Like, between, you can see, like, Corey leaves, he storms off. Because he's like, we're, you're not going to help me cheat? And Picard goes, no, we're officers now. we got to start acting like it. Uh, and, even, yeah, that's when Marta, like, is like, don't worry about it. Uh, so he storms off and... Uh, they just share a moment looking at each other, and uh, she see Picard goes, what's wrong? And she goes, well, usually you'd be the one up to no good. And Picard goes, yeah. And she goes, I always thought you were a, hid- a hidden responsibility. And uh, they go back and forth, you know, geez, maybe I'm getting older. She says, maybe it's these bars, you know, that are feeling heavy. Ensign Picard and Ensign Batan- 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 this Sounds weird. And she goes, Jesus, too bad we couldn't get used to this new life together. And she goes, I mean, the three of us, Corey, too, totally. And then there's a moment, I guess, I, did I write down the timestamp for this? Because it is hilarious. I didn't. But I'll tell you it in a minute. It's coming up on the, the one that's playing. But the doorbell rings and Q comes in. And he goes, and my daughter's still saying this. She, she goes, is there John Look, Look Picard here? And he totally kills the moment, you know, because it was definitely getting romantic. And this is very 80s rom-con. Like we had some kind of wonderful, pretty in pink. Uh, what's, that? what's the one with the guy, McDreamy or whatever, McSteamy, one of those. What's that, Dream a Little Dream? Is that the one he's in? Uh, the one um, with, uh, what's that one with... Uh, that uh, Reese Witherspoon's in one, I think. Uh, so there's a lot of these like uh, rom cons that are based on what is it, Pygmalion? Uh, I think is the original. 
I mean, this is a little different. This is when you're in love with your best friend and uh, you just got to notice him. But so, uh, oh, he, so Q comes in as a flower delivery person, ruins the moment. He's got like a great outfit on, like a red bow tie, and uh, he plays Cupid, which, what does that mean? Uh, let me check the, let, I just want to get to the uh, right timestamp for you here. It's about 20, it's a 2234. He even dances kind of inside to side, really funny. A great, great, great moment. Um, please, Cupid. Let's see. So, so, oh yeah, he goes. Uh, geez, I didn't interrupt anything sordid, did I? And Picard goes, no. And Q goes, pity. She's quite attractive. And Picard goes, we're only friends. Uh, and Q goes, is that a regret from our youth? I hear. And Picard goes, my friendship isn't a regret. And he goes, no, 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 no. I, you know what I mean? More than friends, like a kissy, kissy. He goes, maybe you could change that. Was, I'm like, Q, are you, are you living vicariously for, through Jean-Luc? Uh, and Ricard goes, what do you want? And Ricard goes, your buddy, uh, is, Corey's messing with the table. He, he's, he's cheating anyway. So he tattletales on him. Then we see Picard, Johnny rolls up behind him. He goes, I got to stop you. And Corey's not happy about it. And they go back and forth. And Picard actually puts a hand on his shoulder. He goes, this is no joke, uh, you're not cheating. I'll tell on you if I have to. And Corey says, have it your way, Instant Picard. He, he's really not happy. Uh, um, and then there's music, you know, to underscore that. Uh, then we're back in the dorm room. Picard's pacing. Marta's on her bed. She's kind of in her, uh, like, not in her uniform anymore, like in her hangout clothes, uh, like, so this is, again, I think this is a little bit of an 80s rom-com. I, I think it particularly, like, uh, some kind of wonderful. I don't really even I know if I even saw that. I think that was, like, the best friend that I had the biggest crush on. And, uh, like, I think I, I always thought Eric Stoltz was pretty cool, too. And I think that had the biggest hit song, maybe. Maybe not, though. Maybe they're unrelated. And which one was, which one, again, I just said this five minutes ago, and I guess it doesn't matter. Uh, okay, where were we? Where were we here? Okay, so yeah, okay, also a couple things. So, so she's sitting on the bed, Marta. Picard's pacing, worrying about Corey. We get a cool a couple of cool shots out their window where there's like a set or a painting, like a map painting with a giant building and some sort of station and lights really looked good. Uh, I mean, it just added a little bit, like, a, like I mean, it was, uh, unless the building was, like, very vault-like, it just made me curious. Uh, but they're talking, and then they, like, they see, Picard sits on her bed, they're talking next to each other, and they have, like, full, constant eye contact and big smiles. And uh, they both have beautiful eyes. I, I noticed, uh, like, uh, I guess that's the only way to say it. Both, uh, both characters or both actor, actor and actress have beautiful, beautiful eyes. Very different colors, but both in the blue, gray. Maybe not. Let me let me like check John Luke's eyes. Uh, she, Marta's eyes are very like gray, blue, and beautiful. I guess John Luke's are more John Luke. Uh, are more of a gray green or maybe a, I don't know I, I'm watching right now it's on my phone so I can't see right it is good also for TP fans Marta's rocking a little bit of an Audrey Horn style you know pre I guess it was, it was the same time period like she has a like a Audrey Horn style look to her which to me is kind of like a fem like a 1950s uh Femme Fatale, a little bit, she, not, not in the, the character, just in, I don't, never mind, I'm, I'm digging myself a hole of, uh, but they're like in eye contact, and you could tell they're greatly attracted to one another, and they, like, uh, it's just, they say, geez, uh, she says, she's just so much more mature, it's very attractive, uh, and she goes, have you ever thought about us getting together? And they go, like, there's a big gulp. Uh, and Picard says, uh, yeah, I've thought about it for a long time. And she goes, why didn't you ever say so? And Picard goes, I don't know. Uh, at this moment, I, I don't, 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 he says, and then they just start kissing. 
And because this is grown-up business, it, it, they skipped the grown-up business part, but it goes straight to the grown-up business. I was watching this with my daughter, too. So I was gulping, wondering what was going to happen next. Uh, oh, and when Picard says, uh, I don't know, at this moment, he was almost whispering. I put make out city double exclamation point. Then it's the next morning, Picard's in in Marta, in, in a bed, uh, and there's another person that reaches over to like rub his ear, and it's Q, and it's just a great reveal, very fun. And there's also on the headboard of her bed, Marta's bed, is like this prism sculpture thing that I really liked uh, a lot. And Picard kind of reaches, rolls over. He's shirtless and, and, uh, to look at uh, Marta, and it's Q. After tickling his ear, he's got a big smile on. He pulls his sheets up over his chest, uh, and uh, then he finally lowers his blanket once he starts to feel comfortable. Because Q goes, geez, what's going on? You're feeling guilty? You're feeling good? He goes, no, no, I'm feeling fine. And Q goes, are you sure? And he goes, yeah, we're just friends, nothing more. Yeah, Picard goes, don't worry about it. And Q goes, really, you're just friends. Uh, and she, but Q goes, well, what's up next? And Picard goes, well, things are going to be different now. And Q goes, oh, I'm sure about that. And then he vanishes. And then, uh, let's see, lowers the blanket, I don't know. They totally share a moment, it seemed like, uh, with that. Then Picard walks into, like, the bar again. Bar's very dungeon like, I noticed. Uh, and he tries to kiss Marta on the forehead, and she's having some second thoughts. She's also eating some sort of potatoes or space eggs uh, and drinking out of like a, a tin cup. Almost at first, I thought it was a tankard. I don't know if it's some sort of table side barbecue for breakfast, but Picard tries to take her hand, or he does take her hand. And uh, she says, she's uh, like, yeah, I kind of think it was a bad idea. And Picard goes, I don't think so. And she goes, well, we're friends, and now our friendship's messed up. And Picard goes, maybe you shouldn't think about it. And she goes, well, I wish I could. And we're also, we're separating tomorrow and going on our assignments. It would have been way easier if I didn't have to think about this. But these are predicaments we just naturally seem to put ourselves in as human beings, uh, and Picard goes, geez, I wish I didn't, you know, you know, he feels uncomfortable. He feels uncomfortable making her uncomfortable. And he goes, maybe you could, maybe one of us should skip the party, the end of the goodbye party. And she goes, no, I, I, we planned it. I'll be there. And then she leaves and then Q shows up again. Uh, and uh, Marta's very, she, she had like tears in her eyes. Picard was very stoic, uh. But what's hilarious is, like, uh, after Marta leaves, you see over Picard's shoulder, Q sitting at another table. He's in, like, a maroon, like, a velour suit with a gray, like, fur vest. And he's eating, like, endive or something, like a rabbit. Uh, he's eating, like, a leafy green from the stem, just like a rabbit would. He takes a big bite of it. And then we cut to the goodbye party. It's just Corey, Marta, and Jean-Luc, uh... Oh, Q also says, geez, you managed to uh, alienate your friends. Uh, you're doing really great. Try not to lose your heart. It seems like you might have already. But we see the goodbye party is very glum and awkward. And they're back at the same table where the same potatoes, I think, are cooking. The Nasikins roll in. They say, play Damjad Uhuman. We'll give you a bigger stick. Uh, and they say, no, nope. Greg goes, no, no, not going to be any of that. Uh, and the Nazikin says they're Undari, cowards, and Corey doesn't like that. Uh, he go, and then they say, you have no grumba. And Corey's like, why don't we find out? And Picard goes, no, 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 let's just make peace here. And then they say something about Marta, and uh, Picard like uh, pushes Corey out of the way. And Corey can't believe it. He goes, I don't know who you are anymore, but you're not my friend. And then Marty, Marta says, she goes, goodbye, Johnny. And they leave. And then Q's standing there, and he goes, congratulations, you did it, mon capitan. You did it. 
And then we see the Enterprise, and we're on the bridge, and Worf is talking. Picard's in a green suit. He goes, can I help you, Mr. Picard? Mr. Picard, note. Uh, and Data's looking on in the background. It's Picard's mixed up. He goes, Mr. Worf, uh, and he has, like, an iPad, and Worf looks like, he goes, this is for Commander LaForge. Uh, and Picard's like, what? And Worf goes, is there something wrong? And he goes, I'm not sure. Picard says, I'm not sure. What's my rank? And Worf goes, Lieutenant Junior Grade, Assistance Astrophysics Officer. And Data's very concerned. He goes, geez, are you feeling all right? And Picard goes, who's the captain of the ship? He goes, Thomas Holloway, which sounds familiar. So I definitely don't know who that is, but I do. And Data goes, maybe I should take you down to sick bay. And Picard goes, no, I can find my way down there myself. And Picard walks into med bay. He goes, Beverly, Beverly, you're not going to believe this. And then who's sitting at Beverly's desk but Q? And he says, vel, 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 in like a, a fake German accent. Uh, what seems to be that the trouble, uh, it's Lieutenant Picard. Ian Q's in a doctor's outfit. He even has the round thing that doctors wear on their heads, uh, Bugs Bunny used to, with the strap. Uh, and uh, he's carrying a report. Oh, no, this is later. Uh, what does that mean, carrying a report? Yeah, but Picard says, what have you done? He goes, what you wanted. You're back at the present. You changed the past uh, for you. You changed your past, uh, who you were as a youth, and now you're the man you are today. You should be happy. you got a real heart, uh, and you can live out the rest of your life in safety, running tests and making analysis and giving reports to your superiors. And then he disappears, and Picard has, like, a great – he sighs or breathes and has this great feeling of uh, regret and awkwardness. Uh, then there's an ad. Then Picard walks into 10 forward, and Riker and Troy are drinking some amber liquid together. And Picard really looks awkward. I really enjoyed uh, how out of sorts he kind of looks. Uh, and uh, then he sits down, and he goes, I'd like to tell you about my future. And it, even this is great acting. Because uh, Troy's like, well, maybe I should go. He goes, no, 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 I want to hear your thoughts too. And he goes, I want you to be straightforward with me. Uh, how do you how do you think I am as an officer? And they kind of look at each other and they're like, hmm. And Troy says, well, geez, you get good you get good reports. You're thorough and dedicated. And Riker says, steady, reliable. Uh, they're really at a loss. Punctual. And Ricard's like, punctual. Oh, great. Uh, and Ricard goes, what if I had bigger plans? You know, what advice do you think I could be? Uh, I could move up the ladder. And Riker goes, this is probably not the best place to talk about this. And Picard goes, well, I'd like to talk about it right now. He goes, I'd like to, you know, change change over. You know, I'd like to learn so, to engineering or security and go all the way to command. And Riker goes, frankly, uh, it's not realistic, bro. And he goes, why? He goes, uh, and then Troy goes, this isn't the place to discuss this. And Picard goes, well, it's important. I believe I can do more. And then Troy gets real with him. She goes, that's your problem all along. You have these lofty goals, uh, but you've never been willing uh, to take the risks to attain them. And Ricard says, Riker, what do you think? He goes, yeah, I have to agree. He goes, you got to take chances, man. And also, I really liked Troy's shirt. Uh, her her one, like it had a, she was wearing gray it had this purple V, V around the neck, uh, and the material looked nice. It really, like, it was striking. Uh, like, uh, and they're like, maybe we could talk about this another time. It just goes back and forth. A lot of awkward looks. Uh, and then uh, they get called, like, uh, oh, also on the table is like a clock radio. But then they get called for a senior officer's meeting. Picard almost gets off. Uh, or gets up, uh, yeah, there's like a pyramid clock radio on the table. And then Picard's on the lift because Jordy calls him. He's like, dude, where's that report, bro? you got to get down here. And uh, he's on the lift alone to go to main engineering. He's looking very sad and frustrated. 
And he says, you really got me, Q. You think uh, you're going to make me live out the rest of my life as a dreary man and a TD's job? You win. And the lift opens, and there's the spiritual Q with his hands on his hips, all iridescent. He goes, I gave you a second chance, and now all you do is complain. And Brigard goes, I can't live out, like, I can't be that person bereft of passion and no imagination. It's not me. And right, or Q goes, ah, contraire. That's who you wanted to be. You wanted to take away the arrogance of youth uh, and be less like Q. And he goes, you wanted to, you know, not deal with the Nausicaan. And uh, he goes, so that's the Picard that we see now. No brush with Nausicaans, real heart. Uh, if you didn't realize how fragile things were or how important every moment is. Never put his life in focus. He drifted around. Uh, you know, so this is like a life lesson part of the episode. You know, drift around, you know, didn't deal with the Malika Four, save the ambassadors, or, you know, take over the Stargazer Bridge. Uh, he goes, and no one offered him a command ever because he played it safe. And Q's like kind of right up in his face when he says that. Uh, he goes, never noticed uh, by anyone. And we go, she's your right, Q. You gave me a chance to change, and I took it. Uh, but it was a mistake. I made a mistake. And the Q is walking away, and then he turns around, and he goes, are you asking me for something, Jean-Luc? He goes, yeah, give me, put me back. I want to go one more time back in... And Q goes, well, you know, it's a risk. And Picard goes, well, I'd rather be at the big farm as the man I was than be live that life. And so then we, uh, and Q is very Tron-like, very serious looks. Then they go back to the bar, uh, no gramba. And Picard goes postal. And there's like an 80s action scene, 80s action bar scene with Marta and Corey and Jean-Luc, uh, and the Nasikins uh, doing all sorts of, uh, you know, action moves. Uh, lots of, my daughter said, lots of stage uh, things. Uh, pee -pee, like, uh, she liked it. She said, this is awesome. But she's a kid. She doesn't watch very much action movies. Uh, Picard, uh, something. Oh, Picard laughs again. He's like, like as he... Uh, because Cupid shows up and says, oh, let me let me take your love uh, away. And we go back, as he's laughing, we go back to an overhead shot of the med bay. And Picard is laughing, lying, taking a nap in the med bay, smiling. And they say, Jean-Luc, you're back. He goes, oh, yeah, I'm here. Uh, so good to be back. And they said, you're going to be okay. And then we go to the close episode, uh... And Picard and uh, Riker are having a heart-to-heart. -heart. Picard's touching all his fingertips together. And they go to Picard because I don't know if it's a dream or what. And Riker go or cues tricks. And Riker goes, oh, you know, you never know. When you're near the big farm, there's, there's strange things happen. But it's pretty detailed. Uh, and he, like Picard's like, I can't believe Q would give me a second chance or be compassionate. Uh so if it was Q, I owe him uh, an apology or a debt of gratitude. And Riker says, in what sense? And Picard goes, well, he goes, there's many parts of my youth I'm not proud of. And uh, he goes, those were loose threads, untidy parts of me that I wanted to remove. But when I pulled on those threads, it unraveled the tapestry of my life. Uh, and we get the opening, the closing, it gives us the, and then Riker cracks up though. Because he says, I can't believe a young Jean-Luc messing with Nausicaans. He goes, I would have liked to hang with that Jean-Luc. Uh, and Picard starts telling old stories. He goes, oh, that wasn't the first Nausicaan trouble I had, bro. He goes, well, let me tell you about my sophomore year when I was on Morkin 5 or 6. Uh, he goes, there was a Nausicaan. And uh, he goes, outlying asteroids. Oh, he goes, sit back, Riker. But yeah, so they, like the uh, close gives us the title and like the kind of meaning of the episode, and it comes to an end. A very good episode, and it had some nice moments. I really enjoyed it, and I hope you did too. Good night.
Uh, I want to thank everybody who reviewed the show over on Apple Podcasts. Uh, I want to thank Justin TH from the U.S. Full of Yes. This podcast is uh, so horrific. However you say that word, sleepy. It delivers on the promise to gentle put you to sleep every freaking night. Thank you. Well, thanks, Justin. How about our break? Uh, can't sleep. Uh, this podcast the best way to beat stress, anxiety in the world. At last, he when trying to get some good sleep and recharge. Uh, I listen every night, and it's changed the quality of rest again. Please try. Thank you. How about this one? Zimbalina 13. Lucky number 13. Little Zimbalina. The Zimbal that danced. Uh, so soothing. I fall asleep every time I listen to this podcast. I haven't made it through a total episode. His voice is so soothing. I love listening to him talk. Well, thank you. Uh, here's another funny one. Quaalude 76 from Ireland. Can't help but nod off. Love this podcast. Knocks me out cold every time. Even 4 a.m. Plagued with thoughts. Wide awake. Slap it on. Put your phone on for 20 minutes. And that's it. Snoozy time. And how about AF1212? Uh, perfect. I feel hypnotized every time I listen. Amazing. Thank you. Thank you. So thanks to everyone who reviewed the show on Apple Podcasts over on YouTube. Thanks to everybody that uh, is checking out those long episodes on YouTube. Uh, Sherry, thanks. Uh, Lizzie, Dashter, thank you. Justin C., uh, Jason C, Ty D, thank you and good night. Cupid, thank you and good night. Andrea W, thanks and good night. C Steel, thank you and good night. Uh, Nora R, thank you and good night. Uh, G A, thanks and good night. Susan K, thanks and good night. C Roy, thank you and good night. Pretty N, thanks and good night. Uh, Cupid again, thanks and good night. Uh, T T War. Uh, popcorn, thanks. Uh, Brooke, thank you. Osa, thank you. Adriana, thank you. Lisa, thanks. Uh, Stacy, thank you. Ralthon, thanks. Uh, Chrissy K, thank you. David D, thanks. Uh, little Masha, thanks. Ann P, thank you. CO, thanks. Uh, Teresa, thanks a lot. Uh, Chloe. Thanks, Allie, Charlie, thanks and good night. Legendary, thanks. Uh, Idol, thank you. Uh, Joshua N, thanks. Navy, thank you. Tracy B, thanks. Billy with an IE, thank you. Bolts, uh, Bob, thanks and good night. Oh, Bob didn't like it actually. Gabby, thank you. Free G, thank you. Boris, uh, thanks. Uh, alone, thank you. Uh, Tori, thanks. Uh, Stephanie, uh, Murphy, Mel, thank you. Anime, thank you. Sophia, thanks. Thanks and good night, everybody, for the support. Good night. All right, everybody, it's Scoots here talking you in with this month in uh, Sleep With Me Plus uh, audio news. Uh, we got a referral program going. If you want to sign up for that, you can always do that at sleepwithmepodcast.com slash refer. I'm going to run through all the content we put out um, this month on Sleep With Me Plus. If you're still waiting to transition on Patreon to Sleep With Me Plus, you got most of this stuff too. And uh, first, I'm going to start with uh, like the the podcast, the bonus uh, podcast uh, on Sleep With Me Plus. And I'm going to go in reverse. So this Saturday, uh, Posty's got a new series that comes out on uh, uh, every other Saturday, just about. And it's called Welcome to Scooterville. And he's re- people are really excited about this. Those are Posty Super Deluxe episodes. Everybody that supports the show gets those in the bonus feed. And they're really fun. They're really cool and really creative. Uh, some people like listening to them during the day. Some people fall asleep to them. On last Thursday, TNG First Contact Part 2 came out for Boar Friends and Boar Besties. And uh, so it was coverage, two, two, uh, two-part coverage in January and February. Bonus episode covering the Star Trek The Next Generation movie Contact, uh, First Contact, excuse me. Uh, then Saturday, uh, oh wait, no, I'm, I'm scrolling too fast, sorry. Um, yeah, then Saturday, February 3rd was another Posty Super Deluxe Welcome to Scooterville episode. 
And, uh, yeah, that was all everything in the bonus content feed. I think we got one more bonus. Uh, we got um, some other stuff coming out. All intro, all night episodes. This is for uh, Boar Buds and Boar Besties. Uh, it was deep value. And uh, uh, I don't know what the <laughs> pay, pay, Patreon tiers were anymore. Deep value and ultimate value or something. So we had an all intro episode come out February 8th. Uh, and Big Farm in the Sky PI all night episodes. Uh, the six episodes, six or 13. That was part two, six hours and 18 minutes of Big Farm in the Sky PI. And then, yeah, this week, uh, another all intro episode will come out. Another all intro episode came out on uh, February, January 26th or 28th. I can't read that. Okay, and then the story-only feed and the ad-free feed on Sleep With Me Plus, you know, the, the story-only episodes and the um, ad-free full episodes come out on the same day. So if you're a story-only listener, you get those on the same day. Or if you're, like, you know, making playlists. Um, so let's see. Those are two separate podcasts on Sleep With Me Plus, um, but same content, uh, just... Uh, the story-only versions have no, well, obviously no ads, no theme music, no uh, jingle music, and no thank yous at the end and no intros, just the story-only portion of the episode. Okay, so Sunday, 1239, Dessert Week, that was Great British Bake Off, episode six. Wednesday was Pup Pup Prodigy, our new series, Multiplex, episode one. Uh, February 11th was Wandering Towers, a board game unboxing. There's 1,253 episodes in this feed right now. Um, sorry, I went off topic there. February 7th was uh, Tapestry, which was for Va- v- Valentine's Day in the public feed. And that was um, a TNG, re- like, a, like a repeat of a TNG episode 560. February 4th, Roaring Twenties, Great British Baking You Off to Sleep, uh, Episode 5, that's Season 10, Collection 7, uh, 1235, January 31st, uh, was uh, Notebooks of the Journey into the World of Friends. That was a series review, we'll kind of look at the making of that series. January 28th was uh, Romancing the Stone, Tell the Tape, uh, in anticipation of Argyle. Uh, which you still haven't seen yet. Uh, that was, uh, and then uh, January 24th was Dairy Week, Great British Baking You Off to Sleep, Season 10, Collection 7, Episode 4. And you can also see kind of we stick at the same kind of rhythm uh, for the most part of uh, a kind of random Trending Tuesday style episode that could be anything, the board game unboxing, tell the tape, uh, personal essay. Then um, we do uh, the written series. So we finished up Journey into World of Friends. Now we're starting Multiplex. Then a TV show recap uh, with Great Great British Bake Off. And uh, yeah, what else? Uh, I think that's everything. What I record this week? Great question. This ended up being the week of Bring It On, uh, the cheerleading movie from 2000, by kind of by accident. Well, not even kind of by accident, totally by, like, uh, I did an episode I thought was going to be about Crayola crayons. Ended up kind of I'm trying to imagine if there was a role-playing game based on the film that I'd never seen Bring It On, even though I quote the trailer all the time on this podcast. Then I watched over two episodes, uh, bring it on, on mute, uh, and like kind of recorded, kind of like a TV recap episode. And, um, those, uh, like with, with some kind of, like, well, I rented the movie. So two out of two, two, one and a half episodes have good quality closed captioning. But then my uh, rental ran out when I like I, I broke up the second episode into two parts. So the final uh, twenty five minutes of the show, the movie, I didn't have the best closed captioning. Even though it was mostly action based, it was like the championship. 
But yeah, never seen. I still never saw it. It's already been brought, and but uh, well, you know, I'll look up the trailer later today just to see. And those will come out. I don't know. Right now, it's in February. I don't know. Those will come out March or April. And those will probably come out as TV recaps because we're still recovering, honestly, from the strike. And I'm still a little, um, you know, all the Great British Bake Off episodes we recorded before the strike. Uh, and so I'm still easing my way back into figuring out what our future of uh, TV recap style episodes is. So we have some interim content right now as I kind of uh, see what I'm comfortable with uh, and is sustainable for the long term of the podcast. Uh, and so, yeah, we'll go from there. And uh, um, yeah, I think that's it for now. I'm uh, glad you're all here. And uh, if you ever want to support the show directly, trying to put these at the end of the public episodes, um, just as an experiment so you can kind of get a better idea. Still a sleepy voice. But yeah, if you ever want to check out a seven-day trial at Sleep With Me Plus, it is a huge way to support all the work that goes into the show and make sure the podcast stays sustainable so that you can, you can rely on it and a ton of other people can rely on it. Um, and uh, yeah, you can do that at sleepwithmepodcast.com slash plus. Uh, and then let me know what you think uh, or, or tell me so I can say thank you. Uh, thanks so much and good night.